Stories of a human and chimp-like species have been around since before we understood our own evolution. There's been hoaxes and some bizarre scientific experiments. But the truth is, we have already shared our world with this type of species. Homo naladi, discovered in 2013 in the Rising Star Cave system, South Africa. So far, over 2,000 specimens belonging to at least 21 individuals have been recovered, mostly from a previously unknown obscure cave chamber. These remains have now been dated to between 235 and 336 thousand years ago. The oldest known Homo sapien fossil now being 315,000 years old. I mean it's now indisputable we shared this world together. On top of questions over Naladi's mix of modern human and modern chimp seeming traits, is how did so many just Naladi skeletons end up in this cave chamber? Natural causes like flooding can be ruled out because of the geography of the cave and that Naladi individuals were found in different layers of sediment, indicating they'd been placed here over a long period of time. A predator with a particular taste for Naladis can also be ruled out because of a lack of bite or buttery marks on the bones. The leading theory put forward by the excavating team is that Naledis had a cultural practice of burying their dead. The only other possible answer would be human interference. But excavations are still ongoing and new discoveries once published promise to shed more light on this question. The current theory in full that Naledis brought their dead to the main cave chamber, carried them up this hill and deposited them in the vertical chute leading to the Denaledi chamber. If true, you can only imagine it would have been like giving their loved ones back to the very earth itself. But only a small portion of the fossils known to be in this chamber have actually been excavated and analysed fully. It's expected to take decades to get a full picture of everything that's known to be in there. <laughs> Their feet are amazingly human-like especially when compared to the living great apes' feet, which are probably better described as hands. The main noticeable difference from our feet is a smaller foot arch. In humans, the foot arch absorbs shock, stores energy, and provides extra propulsion power when sprinting. This doesn't necessarily mean the laddie was a slower runner than us, as most of the power for sprinting comes from our legs. And our legs appear to be quite similar. And we're not a very fast species anyway. We can literally be run down by most land predators over a short distance. Where we do specialise is endurance running. Fossil evidence shows we adapted to this roughly 1.8 million years ago, thought to be when we began persistence hunting, chasing our prey for literally days until the prey couldn't run anymore and fell to exhaustion. The adaptation thought to have developed during this period to allow us to run so much longer than other mammals is excessively sweating water as a cool-down method instead of the more common panting. 
Apes do have sweat glands, mostly in their hands to aid grip, which is why humans still get disproportionately sweaty hands and feet when nervous. But back to Naledi's foot arch, or lack of. In this channel's opinion, it does show they wouldn't have been as adapted to endurance running as we are. Flat feet are more prone to injury and much less energy efficient over long distances. Naledi's hands are also basically human hands, with elongated and thickened thumb bones that show they were capable of making complex tools. The only real difference from our hands is that they had slightly curved fingers, indicating they had a better grip than we do. Naledi's teeth need no comparison to show how human-like they are. Juvenile fossils show that Naledi had a late protruding third molar, so a wisdom tooth, like in humans, compared to chimps who have a late protruding canine. Where things start to get ambiguous is Naledi's head. Their brain shape appears to be very human. Casts taken from the inner part of their skull, compared with live human and chimpanzee brains, show their structure is much more similar to us than it is chimps. But their brain size is closer to a chimps than it is ours. So they may have had very human-like cognition, but it would have been limited by the size of the brain. You may have noticed Naledi's facial profile isn't like ours at all. Their mouth looks almost snouted and is much more chimp-like in appearance than human. And this is where we start to get into their more chimp-like traits. This is a comparison between humans, Australopithecus sediba, and chimps. On a side note, sediba is the most likely hominid we have on fossil record to be an ancestor to Naladi. But that's a fairly long, different video. Comment and subscribe if you'd like to see a video on that. Back to this comparison. Humans are the only great apes adapted to throwing objects at a high speed with accuracy, which shows in our straight shoulder to shoulder formation and low shoulder blades. versus chimps who live on the forest floor and have quite a curved structure of the shoulder, which is developed from climbing and swinging in trees. Gibbons, a part of the smaller ape family, have a more exaggerated shoulder curve, which reflects the fact they spend most of their lives swinging in trees. Looking at Naledi in this comparison, you can see they are extremely adapted climbers and very poor throwers. Experts in hominid pelvis structure also point out Naledi seemed to have flared hip joints, which would have provided less bipedal stability than humans have, but more upper leg flexibility. What does all this really tell us about Naledi? They would have been able to travel across a much more varied environment than humans or chimps. Climbing trees, possibly cliffs, and walking on open ground easily. They could have been capable of basic language, living in large social groups, logical planning, and even burial rituals. Their hands were capable of building complex tools Although they wouldn't have been using spears, it's thought hand tools, already found in Africa, in line with Naledi's hand size, could have actually been made by them. And if they weren't making tools, the mind boggles at what Naledi was doing to develop such dexterous hands. 
They shared their environment with anatomically modern humans. Which might be why they stayed capable of tree swinging and hiding in the forest's canopy. Naledi isn't the only species we know of that had a mix of human and more classical ape features. They're just the only ones we've got so much evidence of. From this amazing and incredibly rare graveyard find. What did Naledi actually look like? Truthfully, it's impossible to say. With a lack of hair and skin specimens to study, the only possible way we could find out is to extract some of Naledi's DNA and study it really well. It's this channel's opinion, based on Naledi's lesser foot arch, and the strong likelihood they didn't adapt with us to endurance running, and so sweating, that Naledi would have still had some fur, similar to what we see in chimps. This, combined with their protruding facial profile, is why the artist impression shown in the thumbnail is this channel's top pick for what Naledi may have looked like, out of the masses of varying human to chimp-like artist impressions you'll be able to find on Google. But let us know in the comments what your theory is. Anthropologists working from science that began in the Darwinian period can only describe Naledi as showing mosaic evolution, which is defined as having modern and primitive features. But Chimps and other living apes in general are much better adapted to their environments than we are. And that environment is still here, despite our best efforts. So they are a different but equally modern species to us. And these terms might highlight an issue we have in understanding evolution when we apply it to ourselves. Thanks for watching. This is this channel's first video. If you'd like to see more content, please like and subscribe. It would be really appreciated.